to the Venerable Mang Liao Mi, to Master Sakya Zheng Kong, to the 16th Dhamma King Kamapa, and Master Dupten Tarji. Homage to the main deity of the group practice the, today, Padma Kumara. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Sumo, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, temple directors, all disciples present here and over the webcast. And our guest of honors today, who did the MC set in last in the list earlier? Oh, Dharma Sisters. Accountant to the Two Buddha Foundation. To Buddha School, Dharma uh, Sister Teresa. Her accounting is top notch. And the accounting that she does is uh, will not have even the slightest mistake. She's the best accountant and she has helped our two Buddha school temples and chapters and she uh, does all of this work for free as a donation to the temp to the school and the producer for the TV program in Taiwan the illuminating your heart miss Rebecca Su and her assistant, Dharma Sister Sui, uh, Sally. And the CTI TV of Taiwan, the program Illuminating Your Heart has been broadcasted for many years. And for each ceremony, big ceremonies wherever in the world or any news are uh, broadcasted by in this TV program. And even in mainland China, uh, the program can be viewed and also in many other countries, not only in Taiwan. They are actually on YouTube's uh, some of the episodes. So this program is extremely good, and the producer is uh, work very hard, and she did a lot of editing, uh, voicing over, and then had to be broadcasted every week. And then, even when she comes to United States, she continues to do the work here, and then email them back to Taiwan to be broadcasted in Taiwan. Although now she's in the United States, but the episode every week never stops. So she bring a lot of her recordings here and then edit, do the editing here and voicing over. California, Bob, be mother. So, what I wrote in my book as the four little girls from California, 
actually that referred to this for great ladies, not the for little girls. Many people misunderstood it. And our dentist, Dr. Zhuang, and he helped tremendously to the monks and masters here in Seattle. Not to the Buddha school. But if anyone coming to Seattle, he would also help. So he's helped a lot. Thank you. Thank you for coming. How do you do? Thank you, everyone. So today we will continue to talk, to expound on Hevajra, and we will finish on the exposition on Hevajra and close and get out. So how long have we, how long have we talked on Hevajra? Almost five years? Oh. Oh my gosh, five years. And next, I will give teachings on the nine stages of the great completion Dharma practice. And in order to complete the teaching of the great completion, is much more than this Hevajra, maybe five times more. So five times more than Hevajra. So Hevajra will take five years, so five times of Hevajra. There would be the nine stages of the great completion. That would be 25 years. <laughs> I, don't, I don't dare. To say, I will continue teaching it in the celestial realms. <laughs> So you can go to the celestial realms to continue listening to the teaching. But there is a possibility that at the Double Lotus Pond Columbarium Pagoda, I will continue teaching it there. That there would be in the at nights, like in the nightclub, and then you all can come and live in the columbarium together. Because it is really highly improbable to live another 25 years. For the young ones, it's possible, but for Grandmaster, that would be quite shocking. I would become a really old man. It is highly improbable. So continue talking Hevajra. In Hevajra Tantra, there is a verse that the image of a sattva is the true appearance visualizing with mindfulness 
like the wheel of mandala, the wondrous light of the money jewels, empowers skillful means of self-nature. Then all is accomplished naturally. When we practice Hevajra, the origin of Hevajra is Vajra Sattva. So Hevajra is a manifestation of Vajra Sattva. So the first is the origin of Hevajra is Vajra Sattva. The Vajra Sattva manifests to become Hevajra. So the image of a sattva, a vajra sattva. So with this form is as if the same appearance of a vajra sattva in the world. So the practitioner we use our mind, the practitioners use our mind, their minds to visualize Hevajra and enter into Hevajra's mandala or altar. Altar is like a wheel that's rotating. So it has his, its meaning. So you use your mind to visualize and enter into Hevajra's altar. And this way you enter into Hevajra's altar. You visualize Hevajra. And then the light and the light are reflecting on each other. Hevajra's light reflects on you, and your light reflects on Hevajra. And it would become the wondrous light of the money. And when they are in communion, it would become the original Buddha nature. So Hevajra practice is a convenient method of practice and the most important thing is to manifest your original Buddha nature. This kind of Dharma practice, everything will be accomplished naturally. So in our practice, we use the Hevaja altar in your mind, you visualize or manifest Hevajra, you enter into Hevajra, Hevajra enter into you. And then through the light communion, uh, you manifest your own original Buddha nature. We want to go to the Western paradise, the realm of Atmos bliss of Amitabha Buddha, because the Western paradise is the realm of the Buddha of infinite life and infinite light. And there, there are many and wondrous bliss. That's why it's called the realm of utmost bliss. And in the sutras, Amitabha Sutra, or the Sutra of Amitayus, they describe the um, they have descriptions of the Western paradise. So people all have certain thinking. They would think that if we go to the Western paradise, such a wonderful place with the eight meritorious water, where you can bathe and swim. And there are also just amazing bird sounds, the Kalavinka. Uh, 
the bird chirpings, bird songs, wonderful. And there are many precious trees that generate a wonderful sound of bells. And also the pure lotus, a food that would fulfill your hunger through celestial robes and you live in the golden and palaces made of precious gems and the food the wondrous lotus food and wonderful celestial garment that never get dirty that do not need to be cleansed so celestial robes wonderful food the best kind of uh, palaces to live in and the transportation you can go with the thought whichever you think of you will go to that buddha land that's why some people said they don't like to go to the western paradise and why because every day you have to swim because there are the eight meritorious water that you can only swim and you live in the golden palaces which you will get sick of after a long time and you hear the wondrous la sound that make you want to recite the Buddha's name or mantras there's no other sounds there's no that uh, that dance the, oh, dance. Uh, the very popular Korean horse dance and your lover is not there maybe you would be sick living there but that's not the case you will not get bored there why because with the thought wherever you want to go you would be there that's how amazing it was it is some people said that oh, it would be boring after living there for a hundred years but that's not the case because you can still go to many other places if you're tired of this Buddha land, you can go to another Buddha land. And you can go to many other Buddha lands in the ten Dharma realms, many of them. You can go to the heavenly realms, or you can even come to the Saha world. So we all should want to go to the Western paradise. This is joke. There's a rich man who died, and God appeared. God was very nice to him, and he said, uh, As a rich man, you're very generous, and you had helped a lot of uh, good cause, so I'll take you to heavens. And the rich man said, No, I don't want to go to heavens. And God was surprised. Why? Don't want don't you want to go to the highest realm and live the best and the rich man replied because the heavens are too high and he's scared of height that's not a good reason when our buddha nature opens there is no fear whatsoever you would not have any fear when the Buddha nature appears you will not care about anything you will not care about any single thing and you have no afflictions whatsoever so you would not be worried that you are afraid of height but human beings in the world have afflictions that's why you cannot go but if you let go of your afflictions 
and you don't care of anything, nothing bothers you, then that would be the true putting down of the affliction. So the truly enlightened one would not care about any single thing. That's why he will not be afflicted. If you still feel suffering or miserable, that means you're still afflicted. If you still have grief or sadness, that means you're still afflicted. If there is something that's still in your heart, that means you're still afflicted. If you're truly enlightened, you would let go of all those that all is attained naturally. And then there's more by the quiet contemplation of the mind flows the attainments of the Dakinis, upholding the wonderful bliss, receiving its everlasting effect, purifying the aging gates of this life, clarifying the samadhi of bliss and peace. If you have a very supreme, remarkable, outstanding mindset, then you're about the same as all the Dakinis. Grandmaster, in my dreams, always fly. I always fly in the sky. I would be standing on top of a tall, a tall building, and if you jump, you would die. But in my mind, I know I will not die because I could fly. So, so I could, I could fly in the air. I could dance in the air. I could dance in the air. So I have this skill of dancing in the air. I would fly above the ocean, on top of the mountains, between the high rises, or like I cannot come down this uh, cliff. But in my mind, I know I could fly. So I could fly between the, the cliffs. When you have signs of spiritual response and you following them, the responses, you would become the sky dancers. Of course, at night in the dreams, if it is in the daytime, if I fly to that mountain there, it would be very dangerous because then I would become the UFO, unrecognized flying object. <laughs> then I may be uh, hit or caught by the bullets. If I fly in the daytime, I would become UFO. That would be scary. So in the future, if you master the skill of dancing in the air, it would be fine for you to fly at night, but not in the daytime. Because if you fly, people would think that you're UFO, and in America, people have guns, and they would shoot on you. I don't know whether the armor protection would protect us. that you would have a, a, a protection and protect your own body with it. It's a wonderful bliss. So of all the transcendental power, flying, just flying, is already a wonderful bliss. 
just one of them which is flying. Sometimes in my dreams, there are a group of people walking on the road and I fly in the sky and that group of people looked up and said, oh, so good. It's nice to be able to fly and I was very pleased in my dream flying uh, all over the place because that's a wonderful bliss. You can fly and other people cannot. So then you would be happy. This. So this kind of wonderful bliss is something that you can enjoy. So in my dreams, every time I always fly. <coughs> I don't walk. Even when I walk, it would be <coughs> about three feet above the ground. <coughs> And then people would think that I'm very tall. Actually, no. <coughs> I thought I was shorter than Sun, but that day we we were bare feet, and I stood up and drew a line, and she did, and she was shorter about this much by this much. I thought I shrunk quite a bit in my voice, but actually, I was better than Simu. <coughs> so, uh, this is something that you enjoy. Lasting enjoyment that, and in my dreams, I often fly, I don't walk. Whenever I have dreams, I always fly. Is any of you fly in your dreams? Please raise your hands. There are many of you. Really, every night when I dream, if, if whenever I have a dream, I would definitely fly. That's why I really enjoy it. Doesn't matter how high the mountain is. Like some people climb the Mount Everest and they thought they were incredible. There was someone that was 85 years old and reached the top of the Mount Everest. That's incredible. But the places I fly to are higher than the highest mountain and from the peak of this mountain to the next. And so the enjoyment was truly blissful. And at this time, the sufferings of both aging, sickness, and death have been purified. There is no more such sufferings because I knew that as soon as I let go of my physical body, I could fly. Of course, you're not afraid of death. I don't care to die. I often said, almost die. Of course, when you age, when you're old, old people, almost die near death, but I don't care to die. Everyone will die. When you're born, you're already destined to die. So all the sufferings in between will be gone, especially if you can fly. You have purified the sufferings of the aging, both aging, sickness, and death. 
in meditation too you can do that too and that kind of samadhi is very blissful it's peaceful and with no affliction whatsoever so it's the same kind of this kind of samadhi or meditation so practicing hevajra you would be able to attain this This joke is not so funny, but I will still tell it to you. Let's see if you can, if you will laugh or not. My brother is five years old this year. He cries for nothing. And one day he asked me, "If we don't have any money anymore, will our parents sell you or sell me?" So the older brother said, of course, we'll sell you. And he thought that the brother would cry, but instead he laughed because he said, I know that you're worthless, that the bigger brother, the older brother is worthless. And the younger brother thought that he is, has more value. That's just a joke, of course. But whether you laugh or cry, you don't need to care. At this time, there is only bliss and peace and this kind of samadhi. And in meditation, it's like this. If you practice Hevajra, you would have this kind of attainment that it is irrelevant whether you laugh or cry. In Tantrayana, there is also the attainment of practicing sound. And why? what is the sound? The most important thing is a mantra. Be that's why in Japan, there is a Shingon Buddhism, or the true words. So mantra is also called the uh, uh, the gate to all accomplishment. So we often recite this. Om means universe. The whole universe is the character Om. And A ah is the appearance of the deity. And Hom is the attainment or accomplishment. So visualize the oneself as Hom and the A ah in the space. So the Buddhahood in seven days is this way, that you visualize yourself to become the home character, that all sentient beings are home, like this. One dot, one circle, one moon, and a straight line, and go like this. And there is a circle at the, uh, and the space is ah. That's your yidam, and there's a hook at the bottom. So at the time of death, you think of yourself as the home character, and then you visualize your yidam in the space to be a, a character, and the hook would hook on you, the circle on you, and it would uh, bring you to the yidam's place. That's Buddhahood in seven days. So only A Hom, two syllables. So A, the Yidam, descended and hook on the Hom and then bring the soul, the spirit, to the Western paradise. So in Tantrayana, there's the attainment of sound. And one recite the mantra like a lion roar to break all clingings into pieces. And the sound breaks open the gate 
of the Brahma purity forges ahead with force and enters into the heart of the Jidam. Like what I said, ah, home, you recite like the lion leaping. The mantra of Guru Padma Sambhava. I often recite it this way. Yamantaka mantra. That's the mantra. So you recite mantra like the lion, like the lion leaping fast, and you recite it really fast. It's like the lion leaping really fast, running. And very quickly, you can uh, forego all surrounding things. And this gate of Brahma purity is this gate here to open it. And then your consciousness, your seed syllable, would be thrown out of here to enter into the heart of the Yidam. Then you will arrive at the Western paradise. This is the attainment of mantra recitation. So, that's the mantra of Sakyamuni Buddha. You recite it very fast and, and then you push the radiant Buddha nature to the heart of the Yidam. And this is the attainment of recitation. And also the attainment of the lotus seed of the white dakini. So the white dakini is sitting on top of your head. So the way she sits is that the lotus seed is on top of your head and it's the same. The seed syllable would forge the head and out the crown and enter into the lotus seat to her heart. So the white dakini is the same as the white robe, Kuan Yin, or Avalokiteswara, next to Amitabha Buddha. And immediately you would arrive at the Western paradise. It's the same. If you do the practice of white dakini, that would be the attainment of the lotus seat, or the attainment of the lotus seat of the red dakini. A red dakini. That's doce pamo or vajavarahi or gurukule buddha mother. That's red dakini. Or the wealth attracting goddess, also red dakini. So this kind of attainment of the lotus seat is they are sitting on top of your heads and your central channel is open and connected to the central channel of the Dakini. And you push your Buddha nature to the heart of the Dakini, then you would arrive at the Western paradise. It's the same concept. Let me share a joke. Someone was sleeping in class and the teacher saw it and got really angry and woke him up and asked him to go to the blackboard to answer the question. He was sleeping so he didn't hear the math question or formula. And the teacher was going to embarrass. And as soon as the student stood up, he started, the teacher started to reprimand 
you have such a bad grade and you're still sleeping in class and, and as soon as he got to the blackboard he gave the answer to the question immediately and when the teacher saw that was a bit embarrassed and the student returned back to his seat and then he said let me take a little nap if there's another another one that you cannot solve then you can ask me in the future so I like to tell you please don't undermine Grandmaster Grandmaster loves to sleep but my sleep is the same as my meditation don't you know there is a sleeping meditation my sleeping meditation is different every time prior to enter into sleep I would recite mantras whether it's a nap or sleep or nighttime sleep or daytime sleep I would recite uh, going to the pure land abandoning all sufferings Namo Amitabha Golden Mother please help me enter into sleeping meditation I often recite that that's the easiest the simplest way of course I don't just decide that and I do the nine cycle Buddha breathing prior to sleep in the right nostril one cycle and then out the left side with the full breathing and in the left nostril one full cycle out the right nostril and then both nostrils in to the tip of the crown not going out and then return to the original place and out the both nostrils back and forth and back and forth for nine times and then the Yidam, the deity enters into your body because you're so focused in the visualization white light in red light inside the body black light out white light in red light inside the body and black light out of the body so visualize the three colors and then left and right and nine cycle Buddha breathing and afterwards the spirit body enters into your body and then you're in communion with the Yidam and enter into sleep this is meditation this is a Yidam meditation and in this meditation I like to tell you if I want to get up at 7 in the morning and I do this prior to sleep at night and as soon as I enter into sleep and when I and when I open my eyes exactly 7 o'clock not even one minute discrepancy and for nap time in the daytime I would nap for about one hour I want to wake up at 4.30 as soon as I finish the nine cycle Buddha breathing reciting the mantra closing my eyes when I open my eyes and I check my watch exactly 4.30 definitely 4.30 there's no discrepancy not even one minute or one second some people will, would oversleep or would uh, wake up too early or too late they will not be really accurate but for me every time it's like this I don't know whether it's the same for you that every time you sleep you want to wake up at what time and 
no discrepancies, not even for one minute. Recently, that's always the case. You know, after I uh, overcome the jet lag, it's always like that. So my Chan Zen method is different from others. Even in sleeping, there is meditation. I can meditate by sitting or sleeping. There is no time or spatial dimension. Oh, you sleep so long, and how is your sleep? That's not the case. There is no feeling. There, you don't feel that you sleep, but then you reju you are totally rejuvenated. You have really good energy. Here, as for the attainment during Bardo by hearing the teaching, which was taught by Guru Padma Sambhava, was one in of the great completion. Which, when you are in Bardo state, which is when you become spirits, a true adept, the one with really high attainment, you don't go through the Bardo state, you go directly to the heart of the Yida. There is no soul or consciousness that leave the body because your Buddha nature goes directly to the pure land. You don't go through the Bardo state for the real and true high adept. And in Tantayana, the spirits or the soul is also called the Bardo. Bardo or Bardo spirit, the soul. So when you become this Bardo spirit and you're uh, traveling around and you maybe you go to your home to, to the Lejang temple or to your friend's house or to your girlfriend's house or your mother's house or your dad's house because wherever you think of you would achieve, you would arrive there because uh, as the spirit you can go anywhere really swiftly but you don't even know that you die already. That's called the bardo, bardo state. If someone is telling you at that time that you, now you're already in bardo state and you need to keep reciting the guru's mantra, be mindful or keep thinking of your guru or your yidam or your protector until your protector appears and quickly enter into your protector, then you would be guided by your protector. Or if you're mindful of your yidam, your main deity, and your main deity would appear and then guide you, escort you to the pure land. So when your spirit is uh, roaming around and you cannot think of your guru, of your yidam, of your protector, you don't know how to reset the mantras of the guru, of the yidam, of the protector, and you forgot them all, then you would be reincarnated uh, following your own mind. So that's why when a person dies, all you can bring are only a few things, not your cars, not your house, not your lover, not your wife or children uh, to bring with you, or the money in your account, in your bank account that you can bring them with you? No. The only thing that you can bring with you is your guru, yidam, and protector. You bring with you their look and their mantras, their appearance and their mantras. Because only this way you can have your guru or your yidam or your protector guiding you and escorting you to the pure lands. So in this kind of state, you have to rely by attainment during bardo, by hearing the teaching. And this is the last resort to attainment. 
if you still cannot be awakened at this time, then you would be reincarnated. The husband got home from work and found that his wife cut her long hair to be short. And he was displeased and said, your long hair was nice, why did you cut it so short? Why didn't you discuss it with me first? And the wife uh, rep reprimanded you became so bald like this and you never discussed it with me <coughs> there's nothing to discuss between the two of them but Grandmaster teaching you about Hevajra is to tell you that you have to remember when you're about to pass away, you have to have to be in agreement with your root guru, with your yida, main deity, with your protector. Don't go on your own. If all of a sudden you close your eyes and what appeared are your grandparents, the grandparents that you long for very much and you followed them that's oh no then you would be reincarnated in the six rebirth realms because they would bring you to whatever realm they are in when you close your eyes and what you saw is your ex-girlfriend now is meeting me to become very young and beautiful and you're still very lustful and followed her oh that would be the end of it there are a lot of things that's so enticing to you if you usually like cars and all of a sudden Lamborghini appeared in front of you really beautiful and you thought oh so good Lamborghini is now mine and he got in and drove you got you get in and then you would be reborn as a turtle uh, an insect or if you saw trains when you die you stand by the railroad or railroad station and there's this train and you get in and you thought it will take you somewhere and when you open your eyes, you would become a long snake. They would uh, manifest all different forms. Some people carry a, a carriage uh, to ask you to climb on it. And you thought you became a high official. Like in the ancient time, the high officials rode on a carriage, carried by people. And then you got in. And in a split of a moment, you would become a crab. Crab has many feet. Then you entered into a crab. Or the enemy the enemy that chased after you with knives and weapons and you ran and entered into a dark cave and as soon as you get in then you become a turtle and the turtle uh, give 
uh, has an egg and you entered into an egg of a turtle. Then when you enter into that, you become a <laughs> the egg of a turtle in Chinese. That's a, <laughs> that's a term for jerk. In the past, I told a joke. There are five people in a restaurant. And in Chinatown, they have a tortoise. Oh, in Richmond, in Vancouver, do they sell dishes, meat, dishes of turtle? Turtle? And in our Chinatown, they have. So five people ordering a dish of turtle. And they ask the waiter to divide the dish into five bowls, and she couldn't do it for a long time. After a long time, they asked the waiter, this turtle soup, why is it so difficult to divide it? And then she said, because there are five of you, but six turtle eggs or six jerks. How can she divide? So be careful, other than, for the tantric practitioners, other than the root guru, the yidam, main deity, and the protector, you have to remember by heart their mantras and their look, appearance. And every day you should imprint the look of the yidam on your mind, that as soon as you pass away, immediately, you can think of your yidam. If you can, you can uh, send your Buddha nature to the heart of the Yida, or go directly to the Pure Land or to attain Buddhahood immediately. That's also attainment. But if those are attainments, but if you encounter others, because if you have heavy karma, and if you die all of a sudden, you would forget about everything. You would forget about your guru, the yidam, the protector, the mantras. That's why, as a tantric practitioner, you have to do the sleep and dream yoga. That in sleep and dreams, you need to know of your root guru, your yidam, and protector. That they appear in your dreams often, they often teach you that if you have difficulties, that you can pray to your guru, yidam, and deity, and protector. If you train yourself like this every day, that at night, you can train until that guru, yidam, and protector appear in the dreams at night, because death are about the same as dreams. Because if in dreams you're still topsy-turvy, you're still unclear, and you still have chaotic dreams in your brain, that means your mind is still impure, that you still don't have, uh, you have not mastered your spiritual cultivation. Because if that's the case, deaths are about the same as dreams. So at the time of death, that would also appear. Then it would be impossible for you to go to the Buddha lands. So practicing the red dakini or the white dakini as your yidam, or if you do the practice of Guru Padmasambhava, that's also yidam. This practice, you can send 
your own consciousness of Buddha nature through the central channel directly to the yi dam, and that would be a high attainment. On the phone, the husband told the wife that uh, the door to our house is opened by the thief, and the wife was very worried. So are the money and the, uh, the bank notes gone? No. And then, really? And the husband said, well, I have tried to find them for 10 years. I couldn't find them. How could the thief have found them? So the wife must have been really good at hiding them. So what we want to keep with us, what we want to hide inside us is the root guru, Yidam, and protector. We often memorize our bank account numbers, our social security number inside our brain. And there are lots of passwords, passwords of your lock, but those are not important. The truly important ones are the look and of your root guru, of the yidam, of the protector, and the mantras of your root guru, of the yidam, of the protector. You have to memorize their mantras. This is most useful at the time of death. And the rest, whether they're the numbers of the your uh, safe deposit box, or of your alarm, social security number, or all kinds of numbers, bank account numbers, how much money you have, you keep that in your brain. If you keep those in your brain, then you would forget about the mantras and the look of your root guru, yidam, and protectors. Then you would be in reincarnation. Hevajra is a truly great heruka. Prior to the appearance of all the other herukas, the first to appear was Hevajra. If you master Hevajra, the other five herukas would be easily attained. Once you gain spiritual response with Hevajra, you would gain spiritual response with all the other herukas and Vidyadharas. That's the end of Hevajra today of Mani Benihong.